Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethoroth, and today we are diving into the Destruction Spells in the Arcanum Spell Mod. This is a very potent combination of spells, if you saw a couple of my demonstrations from the showcase for Arcanum. Uh, the tricky part is that the descriptions of these spells aren't actually recorded on the mod, so all I've been able to find is what I can literally find in the mod. Which means for those that have a lot of stuff going on, it's going to be tricky to actually read all of these, uh, just all of the descriptions, but I'm going to do my best. And worst case scenario, we can see them in action and admire what they do. So the first spell we're going to dive into is called Blazing Soul. For 100 seconds, whenever you cast a fire spell, you gain 4% movement, 4% attack damage, and your destruction spells are 4% stronger for 6 seconds. This effect stacks. So once I cast a destruction spell 6 times, I have 24% more movement speed, 24% 24 more attack speed, destruction spells are 24% stronger for 6 seconds. Basically for 6 seconds after every time I cast a destruction spell. Now the nice thing about Arcanum is if you combine this with Apocalypse and use Akatao's Recital, uh, the spell will auto cast when you're in combat. So basically anytime we're in combat you guys are going to see Blazing Soul at work as I become more destructive and my character actually becomes physically faster. And we will show you that as I use it in conjunction with Boiling Earth. Uh, so when I enter combat Blazing Soul will kick off and every time I cast Boiling Earth we're going to see not only an increase in damage and speed but the following. A ray of intense heat that deals 54 damage per second and applies Scorch Mark, dealing 18 damage per second for 6 seconds. The beam leaves 3 globs of slag per second that bursts after 3 seconds, each dealing 10 fire damage and knocking units up. This damage is increased by 18 against Scorch Marked targets. So apparently, this spell actually has the ability to hurl your foes into the air. And uh, we're going to give that a shot. Let me activate God Mode real quick. I figure for the destruction spells, Unlimited Magicka is the way to go. For death and glory. Hello, gentlemen. Anybody want to play? I do. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, we make little blobs. <laughs> they were not kidding about throwing guys into the air. Uh, who's left? All right, you sir, you're going up for a ride. Ooh, well that wasn't too bad. That that wasn't nearly as high as I expected. <laughs> oh, you're still. Oh, you're not dead. Okay then. Oh, now you are. <laughs> That's too bad. Once the bodies are dead, they are no longer uh, bounceable. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Uh, okay, but as you can see, this is a master level spell. It applies Squirt Mark to the target, and then if they're still standing on this thing when it explodes, it does extra damage and knocks them into the frickin' air. Uh, very nice. As you can see, I have Blazing Soul active because of the fire energy around my body that actually makes me faster and do more damage. So this is one of those lovely master level spells, Boiling Earth, that you can use in one hand, which I really like. Because obviously, if you only use one hand for a spell, you can, the other is free to block or use a weapon or use other spells uh, as you wish, as you prefer. Now, I think if you open this chest, it triggers an ambush. Never mind, I've already triggered the ambush. Okay, so our next couple spells, let's see, let's do Cauterize and Combustion next. We'll use them in concert. So, Cauterize is a bolt of heat that does 54 points of fire damage then heals the target for three three times that over 15 seconds unless it's undead, an Achanok, or a machine. So now the thing with Arcanum spells is a lot of them are meant to be used in conjunction with other spells and when I first came across this Cauterize spell I was confused and I didn't like it because why would I want to hit them for 54 points of fire damage if they're going to heal for 162 points of damage over the next 15 seconds, right? That seemed very pointless to me. But we haven't gotten there yet, but there's actually a restoration spell that not only interrupts healing, but deals poison damage if the target is healing at the time. 
So it's actually, this spell is actually designed to work in concert with a anti-healing restoration spell that does extra damage. So we're going to go ahead and use that in combat so you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to top on combustion because I highly doubt any of these guys are going to survive 91 points of fire damage. Um, conjunction, combustion, on the other hand, is a melee range spell. That's why it does so much damage. But it can stagger attackers as well. So it's a good emergency, oh crap, people are in my face kind of spell. So first off, we're going to show off Cauterize in the left hand and then Combustion to finish these guys off. Alright, so Cauterize, as you can see, this guy is hurt, but his health is going up. Which is very inconvenient. It's kind of funny because the more damage you do, the more they heal. Right, the faster they heal, I should say. So if I can do 50 damage with Cauterize, they heal for 150. Which is pretty annoying. Unless you have the restoration spell that does a much better job of uh, interrupting healing and doing damage. So this is a combination. I think the let's double check what kind we're looking at here. Yeah, yeah. Cauterize is a novice level spell. This is meant to be used with another novice level spell, so that you have the option of yeah playing around with your magic at the start of the game. Now we're going to switch out for combustion. Let's see if we can get these guys grouped together. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh, are they still healing? <laughs> we'll have to go for the archer then. So the healing is done. There, there we go. Oh, this really is a touch stop. There we go. All right, lots of damage, but this is this combustion is definitely for a melee spell, melee build because you got to be right in their face. There you go. There you go. Yeah, definitely something you got to use in first person because the the precision on that ability is really. You saw me missing just from. You have to be right on target for that to hit, but it does do a lot of damage, and it's only an apprentice level spell. So I like that the modder considered that your you've got your ranged spells, right? You've got your flame spell, your fireball. They're they're ranged. They do damage in a different amounts. But I like the idea that your most destructive spell actually has the, the smallest amount of range. Uh, I believe there was some melee based spells from the Oblivion and Morrowind days that, that where they did more damage at melee range, but because you were a squishy mage, that obviously brought its own uh, complications, shall we say. Alright, not to be outdone, we're going to dive into Chaos Fireball next. This lobs a heavy fireball, dealing 126 damage in a 15-foot radius, leaves a pool of molten lava that lasts for 4 seconds, dealing 30 damage per second and slowing enemies. So now we have a fireball that can actually slow down your opponents and does a crap ton of damage in a admittedly rather small radius, but damage is damage. Alright, I found our next set of willing participants. We've got my chaos fireball. Let's uh, see what this looks like. Where, where is everybody? Oh, <laughs> apparently I am late to the party. So let's uh, have our own party. There we go. All right. So as we can see, it explodes. It leaves molten fire in its wake. That slows down opponents that are stuck within it. There we go. Yeah, group together for me, people. It only has a 15-foot blast radius, so that does kind of limit... It's not as destructive as Fireball, but it definitely does more damage, given that it's uh, more expensive, or a higher level difficulty spell, I believe, than Fireball, if I'm not mistaken. It also takes a little bit to load up. I've actually missed misclicked the spell a couple of times because it needs an extra second to charge. But I do like the idea that it creates this area here that does extra damage. So like if you're in a dungeon and there's a hallway, you can actually not only nuke your opponent, but keep them locked in on a burning pyre of death. Right? What more do you need, right? Alright, for our next spell, we're looking at Inferno Jet. A long range stream of fire that deals 54 fire damage per second and reduces the target's armor by 50. 
So this not only does damage, not only is it concentration based and has a lot of range, but it also reduces their armor. So that ensures that whoever your party member is that's fighting alongside you, preferably one that's resistant to fire damage, uh, can also get in and do some additional damage because the enemy's armor is reduced. Uh, Inferno Jet is basically flames on steroids, as you shall soon see. Who we got here? Who we got here? Who wants to play? There we go. Uh, as you can see, the... Uh, yeah, you still have quite the range on this thing. Let's see if we can... How far away does this archer have to be before we hit him? Uh, that's not bad. I, I would call that medium range. The damage is insane because it's per second. And there you go. That just, that, yeah. It is easier to aim this in first person because you'll notice when I'm turning it in third person that the, the, the stream gets a little cockeyed. So that's just a point of reference if you're having trouble landing on the target. But I mean, with a stream type weapon, it's hard to miss. <laughs> you just sweep over them a few times and, and life is good. All right. We also have Mending Warmth summons a ball of restorative heat at the target location for 30 seconds that heals nearby units for 10 health per second and reduces their fire resistance by 30. So remember we were talking about spells that heal versus spells that punish people that are healing? There's another fire spell called Punishing Fire. Pearls of Flaming Orb that deals 103 fire damage. If the target is affected by a healing potion or spell, Punishing Fire deals triple damage and dispels all healing effects. So what we're going to do is use Mending Warmth to heal all of uh, the opponents up here in this room. And then Punishing Fire will do three times as much damage to them. Which is insane to me, but I do like the idea of... I'm going to go into first person here because it's just going to be easier to aim all this stuff. There we go. Okay, so we've got our Mending Warmth spell. Go. Oh wait. Can't even see who I'm trying to hit here. Alright, are you guys in range or not? I don't think they are. It only has a 30 foot range. There we go. Oh yeah, big difference. Big difference. If they have the swirly Healy around them, uh, they die very quickly. So this is the combination of Mending Warmth and Punishing Fire. But Mending Warmth only has a range of 30 feet, so you got to be pretty smart about placing it. Notice I was just firing into the fray and didn't realize my initial target was too far away, it was out of range, so the spell wasn't the one-shot kill that I was hoping it would be when it was firing at triple damage. Alright, for this last demo we're going to be picking on some nice mammoths that have volunteered to give their lives to the cause. Uh, the spells we're going to be looking at are Radiant Helix and Soul Invictus. Now, Radiant Helix is a spiral of flame that deals 73 fire damage to a single target, but it heals you for half that amount when it hits an enemy. So if you hit a target with Radiant Helix, you heal for like 36, 37 damage. And now this, this is one of the primary examples of a spell that provides two key roles with one spell, right? You've got your damage and you're healing yourself which I think is amazing, right? You've got this topped off for you. You won't even need the Restoration School if you don't want it because you literally have a fire spell that can heal you, which I think is fantastic. Uh, do keep in mind that the amount it heals you for is not dependent on the amount of damage it does. So even if, I believe, even if you're fighting like a fire Archonok, then it won't hurt the Archonok, but you'll still get healing. So. It's either way, it is a heal, and it will hurt most of your opponents. Uh, we're going to toy with that for a while, and then our finishing move of these mammoths will be Soul Invictus. Uh, you probably remember this from the demo, uh, the showcase, I should say. Summon a Blazing Sun for 30 seconds, dealing 50 fire damage per second and reducing fire resistance by 15% in a 40-foot area. Sunburn enemies take 60 damage over 10 seconds when hit by a fire spell. Upon expiring, the sun explodes, dealing 100 and 600 fire damage to enemies based on distance. So the trick is to A, hit them with the sun, B, hit them with another fire spell while they're in the sun, so they'll do extra damage, and then if you can keep them in the sun for 40 seconds, it will explode and they will all die. So we're going to 
pick on this guy here first. This is Radiant Helix. This is our healing spell. Whoa, what the? What happened there? Okay. All right. So here's the the healing at work. Oh geez, these are fast mammoths. Ah. All right. So there you go. You got your your healing fire spell. What what more does an adventurer need, right? Aside from enough magicka to actually kill mammoths. I'm going to switch this back to God Mode, and then I'll show you off Soul Invictus. Alrighty, game on. Woo! Now we're in God Mode, so we can technically just draw them in close and do the thing. But keep in mind that while they are affected by this burning sun, if you hit them with another fire spell, uh, it's super effective, right? They go down super quick. So not only does it do a lot of damage, not only does it explode after about 40 seconds, but it makes other fire spells that you use on them also do more damage because it lowers their resistance and it adds in extra damage. Lots of fire damage all over the place and the graphics are amazing and things explode. So hard to argue with that. All right, so for this last demo, I wanted to show you guys what this thing can do at early levels. So for example, I'm already popping out Blazing Soul through Akatal's Recital, which is just an apprentice level spell. You can start with this. Uh, basically, if you find a, a vendor that sells it, you can start with this at the start of your playthrough. So I'm already getting faster and doing more damage every time I cast a flame-based spell. We're going to use Combustion for when things get in melee range, because it's Skyrim and everything's trying to get in melee range. And then we're going to use... what was the other one? Radiant Helix, which is an adept spell, so it takes a little bit longer to get up to Radiant Helix. But you should be able to get this within an hour or two of your playthrough, which will do damage and heal you. So we're going to go back into Immortal Mode. We want to be in first person so that you can land this Combustion spell. Goodbye. Oh, the blast radius on it is pretty good. There we go. And then you... Okay, we'll get... We'll take a couple of hits. And then... Heal up. There we go. So you've got your, your main melee spell, and obviously you could use Firebolt or something that's a little more ranged, if, you, if that's your choice. Uh, I like Combustion because it maximizes your damage, and uh, see what I mean by damage? Jeez. There we go. Yes, that works so much better in first person. And then if they do manage to rough you up, you've got your ranged flaming healing spell that you can use to patch you up. Uh, yeah, so let me know in the comments below, what do you think of adding in destruction magic that heals? Is that is that blasphemy? Should that never happen so that you still rely on the rest restoration school, at least in part? Or do you guys like the idea of making one spell school more versatile so that you can do like an entire playthrough off of that particular school? For example, uh, I've noticed if you use Ordinator, you just have so many perks in one school that it makes sense to me to have spells that provide multiple functions. Because if you really want to put, you know, two dozen perks into your destruction school, you're not going to have a lot for your restoration spells, you know? So having destruction spells that heal kind of it allows you to put all those perks here. Unless, of course, you get another uh, an expansion to Ordinator where you get like double perk points or 20 extra starting perk points or something like that, because then it's a moot point. But that makes your character ridiculously powerful, so I don't usually, I don't usually do that. But let me know in the comments below what your tastes are in relation to these spells. Let me know what your favorite was that you liked the most. Uh, Soul Invictus is obviously the one that makes the prettiest explosion because I mean master level spells what do you ex what do you what do you expect I particularly like though that it is a one-handed spell I like it because with a one-handed spell that just frees it gives you so many more options right Especially if you want to combine spells from other schools, if you want to bring in flame archons, if you want to uh, use frost magic so that the enemy is slow or trapped within range of this fire spell. There's a lot of options to be used when, when your master spell only needs one hand. And it also still keeps gives you that mobility as opposed to being stuck with the two-handed spell that makes you stand in place like a sitting duck for a while. I never that, that always bugged me. 
It makes sense for some spells like Oblivion Gate. Obviously, that shouldn't be something that you can just summon and run around with. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. So uh, feel free to give my video a like, subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.